I'll be Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. As you sign in, uh, let us know where you're from and how you learned about Pet Partners. And welcome to all our current members. It's so nice to digitally be in contact with you again. Hi, everybody. Hi, everyone. Happy Friday. Hope you're enjoying your first week of 2021. Let us know where you're from, who your pets are, how you learned about pet partners. Hi, Alex. There's our pal, Alex. Hi, also, Ashley. if you're a handler. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, Nuria. Did I say your name right? Oh, Slovakia. Cool. Sweet. Tell us about your pets. I have three cats. One of them's a, a former Pet Partners Therapy cat. Oh, hi, Don. How are you? Dog trading cards. Very cool. I have a dog and a cat, neither of which are pet partners, but they are my personal pet partner. <laughs> I have two dogs and two cats in the house, but unfortunately I've lost my partner of 10 years who was a dog and a rabbit that I visited with for four years. Oh, hi, Kimberly, welcome. Oh, we have a guinea pig named Calvin, how cute. Someone from Boston, yay. We need more people in Boston, thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. Hi, Kimberly, Oreo, and what was the other? Pretzel. Pretzel. It's a great name. It is. All right. There's a bit of a break. Oh, there they are. There we go. <laughs> a little slow. Oh, good. I said your name correctly. Thank you. Yay. It's good to know. Mississippi. We need people in Mississippi. We love to hear from all these people in, in the more remote parts of the country. Thank you. All right. In about another minute, we'll get started on the actual theme of the day. Starting with introductions. This is a, a pet partner's live learn about the pet partners therapy animal program how to become a community leader david and oliver in atlanta hi, hi welcome Dave. wow seven dogs guinea pig and a parrot my kind of house. Yeah, right? <laughs> Full house. You're just joining us. Welcome to Pet Partners Live. Uh, we'd like to know where you're from and who your pets are and your role with Pet Partners or if you are hoping to join Pet Partners. Hi, Tracy and Irene. Oh, Stephen has a uh, Chihuahua and a cat registered. Awesome. Which I like the other species. Hi, Colleen. <laughs> Hoboken, New Jersey. Yay. Yeah, we need more New Jersey folks. That's great. <laughs> All right. Uh, so hopefully more people will continue to trickle in. And if you have any questions, please type them in the comments. Our lovely colleague, Julia, is our little support person. She's awesome at, at getting you all the relevant links and sending instructions on where to go and what we're talking about. 
Uh, my name is Maura Smith. I work in the Pet Partners Therapy Animal Program. I'm based out of New York, uh, and I am a licensed team evaluator, and I work for Pet Partners as a team evaluator and volunteer instructor support specialist. And today we are talking about how you too might be able to take on one of those volunteer leader roles. And I am joined by my lovely colleagues, uh, Lisa and Carice. Lisa, go ahead. Tell us about yourself. Thank you, Maura. I too am... Um part of the support team for uh, Pet Partners Therapy Animal Program. Um, been with Pet Partners for a long time. I'm an instructor, an evaluator, and as we were mentioning earlier when we first logged in, that I was also a handler with a uh, rabbit and a dog. Um, I'm so happy that you're all here today. Thank you so much. Carice? Uh, my name is Carice Tarbet. I am the Learning Experience Manager for the Therapy Animal Program. I also oversee the Crisis Response Program. Um, for pet partners, and we are so happy to have you here today. I am really excited about all of the comments that I'm seeing coming through. So welcome to all of you. Thanks for joining us on this lovely Friday afternoon. I hope your weather is as good as mine. Okay, today we're going to be discussing two ways, uh, two avenues to become volunteer leaders within the Pet Partners organization. Um, why we're having this today is because people are increasingly looking for animals in their life. Um, in order for us to have a strong, robust program nationally, we need to have volunteer instructors and volunteer team evaluators. So we're hoping today that um, by the time you've heard our requirements and we've gone through it, that this might be something, an avenue that you will wish to pursue. Um, just to give you a kind of an idea of where we're sitting right now with the organization, current numbers, um, we, we only have 148 active volunteer instructors right now. Um, we really would hope to increase um, those numbers. But unfortunately, we also have to have a team evaluator wherever there is a volunteer instructor. We have 40, 435 current uh, US team evaluators. Um, and then today, as if you logged in right when we started, we were talking about there's some areas that we really want to um, be focusing on. Um, we're talking states like Oklahoma, South Dakota, New Jersey, um, West Virginia, Delaware, Pennsylvania, um, South Florida, Maryland, um, South Carolina. All of those are areas that we, um, you know, we have a lot of requests for teams, we have a lot of interest, but we just don't have the volunteer leaders that will strengthen our program and allow us to expand in those areas. So that's what we're looking for today is um, for people who might be interested to take up that role and um, help us develop our program. Uh, Maura? Yep. Uh, we want to be able to fulfill a request for a visit from a therapy animal team, no matter where you are in the country. That's the ultimate goal of efforts like this. And uh, I don't know how many of you attend a lot of our lives, but you have uh, <laughs> the pleasure of interacting with up to four Pet Partners staff members right now at a time. So that gives you an idea of how important this effort is to us. It's kind of all hands on deck. Um, so did I miss any questions? Susan Harris from California. Hi, Susan. How are you? We were recently in, in touch. Thanks for recently renewing. Um, yep, there are some people who need some help finding team evaluation events, which is exactly what we're, we're hoping to fix that problem. Stay in touch with us, uh, Nadja. I think I said that name correctly, and we'll, we'll definitely get you some help on that. A whole bunch of other stuff. Okay, so some questions we want you to consider or anyone else who you're talking to about pet partners about taking on one of these volunteer leader roles um we want to know what are you worried about if you've thought about it before uh what kind of ways can we assuage your your being if you're being hesitant about it what what's kind of giving you pause we'd really like to talk about that with you if, if there's something that you have an assumption about what this role entails it's a lot easier than a lot of people think when they first get started. There is some work that goes into it, but we're here to help you. So we're always willing to, to troubleshoot and, and try to be as flexible as we can um, to make sure that it's a, a fulfilling and engaging and fun uh, volunteer opportunity for you to do. Um, what's holding you back? Some of the things you need in order to be a volunteer leader is 
some free time. Uh, we only ask you to do a minimum of six events over two years if you're a team evaluator. Those are testing events with new teams. Or uh, four events if you're a volunteer instructor. Is that correct, Lisa? Correct. Yeah. So if you can carve out a weekend day either four or six times over two years, then you can probably be a, a volunteer leader and help uh, grow your therapy animal program in your community. Every little bit helps. And then uh, what are you excited about? If you're someone who has already applied and is already looking into it um, and is really serious about getting going and earning your license, what are you looking forward to? What are you hoping to accomplish? So if you could tell us some of those things in the comments. Um, if you want to give us a general idea of where each of you are in the process, has anybody actually started an application? Um, or are we all just kind of, you know, feeling it out and, and we're just kind of browsing at the moment? I think there's there's often a common misconception that in order to be a volunteer leader, you need to have some kind of animal expertise, that you need to be a dog trainer, or you need to have you know, a business background having to do with animals or some sort of um, behavioral specialty. And that's really not true. We're looking for, you know, people that are passionate about the Pet Partners Therapy Animal Program and want to share that passion with others and see the program grow in their area. Like, as long as you have that foundational piece and you believe in our mission, you know, we're open to working with you. Yes, we provide training. So we don't expect you to be an expert when you first express your interest to us. Because those of you who are already members know that Pet Partners is, is very rigorous and we are very proud of our philosophy and our standards. So that's what we want all of our new volunteer leaders to really learn kind of the Pet Partners way. And so we will teach it to you. Any? Janet and Jackson, hi. I think I remember you guys. I certainly remember that name combination. Oh, you moved to Mississippi. Congratulations on your move. I, uh, prior to the pandemic, in the before times, I was an active volunteer leader in New York City. I live out on Long Island now. So if there's any of my New Yorker folks, hi. <laughs> Yes, one of the wonderful things about the Pet Partners program is that we are not just dogs. We welcome nine different types of animals. Um, and hopefully you'll be seeing pictures of uh, a llama in our little presentation. Um, we also have rabbits, rats, guinea pigs, cats, pigs, llamas and alpacas, horses. What am I forgetting? Birds. Those are all the different types of animals that you might be able to evaluate if you become a, a team evaluator. That's one of the more exciting parts of the role is learning about all those other species. <laughs> oh, we've got an emergency response volunteer. Cool. Yeah, that's great. Um, as I said at the top, I manage the crisis response program that we have at Pet Partners. Uh, anyone who is registered with their animal for six months can apply for the AACR Animal Assisted Crisis Response Credential and uh, join us in the work that we're doing in your local communities. Julie asked a, a good question. and um, Our colleague Julia will probably post something again later but yes we are going to have uh, pet partners events on the calendar for the rest of the year we've had events even during all the shutdowns and, and social distancing restrictions uh, there was no blanket um, ban on activity from pet partners at the very beginning of the pandemic because we knew that it was going to be an individual case by case community by community decision so if you are unable to see an event on your calendar go ahead and reach out to us um, and we might be able to let the volunteer leaders near you know that there are people looking for slots, but it's it's every it's up to everybody's discretion. So it might just be that your volunteer leaders are not um, ready to host events yet. So you, unfortunately, you might have to be patient. We've got lots of other stuff for you to do in the meantime. Uh, there's lots of pet partners education for you to 
uh, consume while you're waiting for your team evaluation. Okay, so now we're going to get into, there's there's two roles we're talking about today. I'm kind of covering the team evaluators, and Lisa is going to cover the volunteer instructors. So uh, I joined Pet Partners with my cat as a handler in 2012, and then three years later in 2015, I became a team evaluator. And the team evaluator is the person who actually administers the in-person test that is required for people to join Pet Partners as a registered team. Um, I had a, a little bit of an unusual and unique experience being in New York City, uh, mostly Manhattan. So we had a really wide variety of uh, dogs that come to us, but I actually didn't get to meet a lot of other species. There were cats, and I think I saw one rabbit, and I most recently uh, evaluated a pig out here on Long Island. Um, but most of them were dogs, and we actually had a lot of small dogs, uh, but they were every kind of type and breed that you could imagine. Most of them had really good leash manners, um, and most of them were really dog friendly. And that's a little bit unusual to the experience in the rest of the country where dogs uh, are more backyard dogs. And so there's a little bit of training their handlers have to do with leashes. Um, but it has been an incredible experience. You get to meet so many really wonderful people. These are people who are animal lovers, who want to share the love of their animal, who are community service minded and want to give back to their community. Most of the handlers that you encounter were inspired to get into this through um, being very personally touched by the work. Many of them come to us because a friend or family member was going through some kind of crisis and an interaction with a therapy animal helped get them through that crisis. Um, so it's really, if you are even a little bit social, um, even if you're an animal lover, we, we're looking for the people who have some people skills and are interested in meeting lots of new people as well as new dogs and cats and the other species. You get to meet all kinds of folks coming from all kinds of backgrounds. It's, it's really impressive and, and rewarding. Um, so I'm one of the more active team evaluators, just as a um, side effect of where I was active in New York City, there's just more people. Um, so I've tested hundreds of teams um, and I have no regrets. I think the Pet Partners training prepares you very well for what you're likely to encounter. Um, you know, 99.9% .9 of the people, even if you have to give them bad news, they're wonderful. And in the extremely rare event that you encounter someone who's a little bit difficult, Pet Partners backs you up. Um, I, I've never been deterred from doing this activity for any reason. It's always been worth it. Um, you build a lot of really interesting community connections. I've uh, gotten to meet some of my <laughs> local political representatives who were interested in this, and then he became kind of a message amplifier. That was a really cool experience. Young handlers, um, dogs who buck breed stereotypes. So one of the most memorable moments was a, a little York Yorkie who was impeccably calm and trained. So that's a really cool thing you get to see is that uh, every dog's an individual um, and it just gets affirmed every time you do one of these events. Uh, so I hope that is a little bit inspiring and encouraging to you. Um, I'm a, a true believer and, and I hope that some of you will apply and, and see that it's really, really great work. Uh, if you think you wanna take that next step, we do have some requirements in order for you to apply that we'll get into the details at the end, but the ideal candidate is someone who has human skills and animal skills, um, because you're going to have to be kind of a teacher and a coach. You're going to have to walk these people through a test that's a little bit nerve wracking because everybody gets nervous when they take a test, but the test is very fair and very clear and the way we've structured it, we really want our handlers to understand why they're going through the exercises they're going through. It mimics what actually happens on a test, or on a, on a visit, sorry. It mimics what actually is going to happen on a visit. So you are really there as kind of their cheerleader and their coach and you're walking them through and you wanna set them up for success as, as much as possible. And then once they're finished, you will be um, helping guide them on the beginning of their volunteer, volunteer journey by helping explain to them where you think they're best suited to visit based on how they did on their test. So um, a, a handler who um, has a really good demeanor with their animal, but maybe doesn't have the strongest handling 
skills, but their animal's calm and friendly, they need to start out in a bit of an easier environment. And you need to be able to explain that to them uh, with specifics and how they did how they did on the test. And then there's the teams who come in and they've had years of training and they're like an expert handler and they're very proactive and calm um, and their animal's great, but they weren't as good at uh, interacting with the clients, which is a requirement of the test. So you're going to have to be able to um, be good at giving feedback. That's kind of the key skill of being a team evaluator. So keep that in mind as you are looking at the application requirements. Um, once you have an approved application and you are enrolled, there's a two-part uh, multi-week training. We used to have a live event attached to this that's currently been postponed until the second half of the year. We're doing it all virtual now, so you will need to be able to participate in video calls. Um, but there's an online discussion with your fellow students for five weeks. We go over different topics and we ask for your thoughts and you're going to be referring to our manual and that's kind of like your, your study guide. Um, and there's little discussion threads. So you're going to be having different discussions on different topics related to your responsibilities uh, as a team evaluator. And then also we have some online courses that you will be required to take. And that's kind of a more detailed overview of pet partners, rules, policies, procedures, your expectation, uh, expectations of you as a, a volunteer leader. Um, and it, I actually am preparing to roll out the 2021 edition of this. So I just did a bit of a time study and it is around 40 hours over five weeks is the time commitment. And there are uh, one or two live meetings, but everything else is on your own schedule. So that's something to consider if you want to take that on this year. Um, and the other role is our volunteer instructors, which are kind of the welcoming committee. So Lisa, you want to tell us about how to become a volunteer instructor? Hi, everyone. Um, I've been a volunteer instructor and evaluator since 2011. Um, the best part about, we do have an online course, and I want everybody to understand that we do have an online course, but we have found that a lot of handlers like to have that one-on-one, -on -one, and that's what's so um, exciting about being an instructor. Um, I was a volunteer for a long time in Oncology Infusion, and um, the, when people are sitting in the chairs all day long, the one topic that was always coming up over and over and over again were animals. So as a volunteer instructor, you get to be the one to kind of mentor, help, assist, um, get the teams ready to go. Um, as Maura said, she gets to meet some wonderful people. In my process, I have been able to meet um, the heads of many hospitals and organizations, all the people who want to have teams, they'll reach out to you. Um, you're, you're able to go and provide more information about animal assisted therapy and about the pet partners program, not just to your students, but to um, other people in your community. If you're someone who really loves to um, interact with people, you maybe you're a teacher or a public speaker, um, just someone who's been a volunteer for a very, very long time and understands, you know, the, the pitfalls of volunteerism so that you can aid these uh, aid the teams when they go out to do their visits. Um, we need, we do need strong candidates. It's kind of a long day. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Our course is eight hours, um, but we do a lot of fun things. You get up and you move around. We do scenarios. We help the handlers be able to work out and plan what they're going to do when they go on visits so they're not caught um, unaware. I actually sat during a um, presentation one day listening to one of my handlers who had gone through my workshop and he was telling everyone in the room how ridiculous he felt going through the scenarios and and role playing and and he thought the whole thing was kind of funny that was until the first day he went on a visit because the very first day he went into the VA um, hospital here locally in Vancouver Washington everything we had talked about Every scenario came to pass. Someone tried to give his dog a piece of chocolate. Someone had asked him why he was there. What, what are you doing with this dog? He had his speeches already. He was all prepared because he had been able to practice during our workshop. And that's what you get to do. You get to help these people um, enter a facility, not be nervous, not be scared. They're ready to go. They know what to say. They know what to do. And they're looking forward to that interaction and bringing that, uh, all that joy that our animals do bring um, anytime anyone sees them. So we are encouraging, um, if you have any of that kind of background, you like to speak, you like to hang out with people, you like to learn about their, them, um, volunteer instructor is a great role. 
Um, like I said, we do have the online course, but again, a lot of people like to uh, have an instructor. And I've also in my, at least in my classes, my students have, you know, passed out their email addresses and gotten together in parks and different places around the town and practiced, you know, different exercises of um, the evaluation. And they became a community within themselves. So that was, that was so nice. I mean, many of the people in my workshops I'm still communicating with today. So it's, it's a wonderful opportunity um, to help people on this wonderful, wonderful journey. There's just nothing better than watching a child smile or, you know, someone be able to take their medicine because their blood pressure went down. Um, it, 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 I just can't even put words into how wonderful this experience is. And so if you were to uh, apply to be a volunteer instructor, what do you have to do to earn that license? In order to volunteer uh, or to uh, uh, be eligible to be an instructor, well, initially, we would um, obviously love to have our handlers do it. Um, we would love uh, handlers who've been with pet partners for a minimum of two years uh, start this process or look into this process. We also look for visiting experience. And I'm sure Moore is going to say the same thing as far as team evaluators. Um, knowledge of animals or, you know, knowledge of people is, you know, one thing. But um, it, now I've kind of forgot where my thought was going. <laughs> We're all going to uh, overlap on each other anyway. It's fine. Yes, we do. We, we overlap. Um, so uh, that's what we're looking for. And we want um, visiting experience in different different settings, too. We don't want just somebody who's been visiting it at, um, say, a school, for example. We want you to be able to have maybe some um, experience with assisted living, with a hospital setting, because as Maura's talked about, you will, during your workshop and as a team evaluator, you're going to be um, use, calling on that knowledge in order to help these people decide where it is that they, they will be the best fit, the most successful fit when they go out to visit. Um, if you're not currently a handler, we will consider it, depending on your previous experience. Again, if you have some strong volunteerism in your background, definitely please reach out to us because, as I said, that is very, very important for our handlers to get that perspective, that visiting perspective. Yeah. Did, did I forget anything? No. <laughs> Um, so those of you who are not currently members of Pet Partners, just an overview so that you understand how these two roles intersect. Everyone who wants to become um, a Pet Partners volunteer team with their pet and go visit people in their community, they are required to complete a handler course, which exists either online or in person. So volunteer instructors really help make that local connection with people who want to join Pet Partners. They offer the required course. And then once they've completed their course and their animals had a vet screening, they can sign up for their uh, team evaluation, which is the test that they have to take in order to become a registered pet partners team. So volunteer instructors and team evaluators work together to prepare volunteers to be ready to go out and visit in their community safely and with professionalism. Um, so are there any questions that came in? We just talked a whole lot. If you are interested um, and you do have to leave quickly, please uh, email us or you know log into the Pet Partners web website and um, go to the Contact Us link and we will get back to you with more information. Um, we appreciate your interest. Yeah. If there are any um, resources that were linked or that we mentioned that you can't access, you have to create an account at petpartners.org. It's free to create an account. Um, and that'll allow you to see a, a whole bunch of different uh, resources in our resource library. So the image that just went up is the Volunteer Center Home. Once you create an account, that's what you'll see. That's kind of your home base. Uh, so you can click on resources to read all the information that um, you'll need to become one of these volunteer roles or a handler. Um, one of the things if you're considering applying is that we are going to need you to show your volunteer experience. So if you're a current team who's been considering this role, please log your visits. And that is one of the modules in the Volunteer Center home, log a visit. Um, and if you need help with that, let us know, get in contact. Um, if you haven't been using log a visit, that's okay. You can submit documents to us uh, other ways. You can do one on the application itself and you can also email us directly. Um, so we'll be here to support you in your application if you need it. 
Um, and Carice, do you want to talk about some other ways you can help in the community if you're not going to be a, a volunteer leader um, or you don't have an animal to become a team with? Sure. So like I said, I have a dog and a cat who are absolutely not pet partners for anyone other than me. Um, so ways that I can volunteer my time is to help find space. So, you know, all of the places where we hold these events are, you know, typically donated or at a low cost so that, you know, we can use like a library conference room or, a, you know, community center. So helping to find a space if you are someone who owns your own business or has access to, you know, a large space that we could use, it's always, you know, we have an in-kind donation form and you can um, donate that space for one of these events. You can also volunteer if, you know, this sounds like something that you're interested in, but you're either without a pet or you don't have a pet that's ready to become a pet partner yet. It's, I always recommend volunteering at some of these events. Um, you get so much experience and you get, you know, you get to be firsthand seeing what it takes to go through the evaluation, what is required of the handler and the animal. Um, and if you're interested in being a volunteer leader, that gives you a chance to work side by side with them and volunteer with them to see, you know, what they do at an event. Um, I think those are the primary ways that we would want you to help, especially to support your volunteer leaders locally. As if you can volunteer at an event or provide them with space, those would be, you know, fantastic resources for the volunteer leaders that are already available to you locally. South Africa. Oh. <laughs> Um, if we do have people internationally today, welcome, mm. I'd appreciate it. I love the fact that you're here. But today we are only going to be entertaining, um, we're only talking about, you know, team evaluators and instructors in the U.S. Um, it's an, an entirely different process for the international side, so that's why we're going to stick with the U.S. today. And I also noticed that Maura uh, talked about how long her training was for a volunteer instructor. It's not quite as extensive. Um, there's, if once you are accepted, depending on how uh, fast you want to go through the course, you could probably get it done um, within a day. Uh, so that's it's, it, but it's self-paced, so it's up to you. It's just um, it's just as rigorous as far as the education aspect, but because the team evaluator actually has to go out and meet with these people, that's why we have the in-person component that we do not have with the instructors. So the instructors, it is all book work online. Um, process versus the in-person. One thing that we didn't mention, ladies, uh, is that instructors can also hold mini workshops. And these are really vital to um, helping educate not just handlers with the Pet Partners Program, but pet owners in general about some safety, some well, well-being for your animal, um, as well as just safe skills for how to handle your animal uh, in public. Um, and these are much shorter. So Lisa said that the workshop itself is around eight hours. So it's a full day, but a mini workshop, we do them both in person and online and they're about 90 minutes to two hours. Um, and those are a great way to get people in your area, just familiar with some of these standards of care that we believe in at Pet Partners for animal welfare and well-being. And then also of course, introduce them to the Pet Partners Therapy Animal Program. So you can kind of suck in all the animal lovers. Be like, oh, hey, did you know that there's this wonderful community service activity that you could also do? Yes, the mini workshops are definitely good for education, especially if you're going to be reaching out to facilities. They're not going to want to probably have um, eight hours or will have eight hours to sit in one of your workshops. But definitely if you put on a mini session for them, I've done it and had just wonderful response. Um, some of the some of my people from facilities have even come to um, evaluations and helped um, because they were so excited to be part of this process. So yeah, we have done a lot of talking. If you have any questions about becoming a volunteer leader or about you know holding an evaluation or a workshop, um, please drop your, your questions below. We have a llama person who wants to be an instructor. And of course, um, we have people who wear a lot of hats. 
uh, at Pet Partner. So some of our instructors are also evaluators. Some evaluators are also instructors. That does increase the number of events that you're required to hold every two years. Um, so it's six if you're an evaluator, as we said earlier, and four if you're an instructor. So then, you know, it's 10 every two years if you take on both roles. And, and we do hope that you have um, enthusiasm for all nine of our species. Um, you know, we've had some people in the past, you know, if you know one really well, we do have the resources to help you with the others. We just hope that you're open um, because if you have a workshop, you may have a guinea pig handler or a rat handler along with a llama handler and a dog handler and a cat handler. So um, you'll have to um, help them find all that information, which we do have on the website. We have resource resources for all of our animals. And that's we really want to. Um, our candidates, both vol all volunteer leaders to be interested um, and help people with all nine of our species. And you both said that, um, you know, of course the majority of animals that you evaluate or in the majority of handlers that attend an evaluation or a workshop are dog owners. Mm -hmm. But what is it like when you get your first, oh look, we have Penny the pig right on time. Thank you, Penny the pig. What is it like when you get your first animal that signed up for an event that is a species you've never evaluated before? Is that, you know, how is that for you? Uh, well, first of all, one of the handy things in our, our calendar tool is that when people are signing up for your event, you can actually see what species are going to come. So if you are checking your event on our calendar, and you see like, oh, wow, this person has uh, a pig who's coming to test with me. I've never tested a pig before. You can go to the Pet Partners website, look at our resources, study up on the differences for the test. Uh, the test is very similar across all the species with a few little tweaks. So you have to familiar familiarize yourself with those little tweaks. Um, and we have behavior packets. You can reach out to us and we'll try to give you some advice. We can try to connect you to another local Pet Partners member who might know more about that species. That's something that I did. Um, I had to call in somebody who knew more about rabbits than I did. So I was uh, doing the test as normal with this team and their rabbit. And any I, they, they were essentially an extra set of eyes. So um, I would just be checking in with that extra person and be like, everything's good, right? I think everything's good, everything's good. And they would say, yep, yeah, everything's fine. And then if they did see something that was concerning that I had missed, they could call it out and help me. Um, and that, that was a really good experience. But the behavior packets were really helpful. They were right on, uh, they were exact, and, and I didn't run into anything that I was like, oh, I didn't know about this. Um, so we do provide those resources. The most interesting non-canine I had was a pig that I most recently did here on Long Island, and it was so cool. Um, the pigs are tested for resource guarding. You have to present them with food and then take it away and they have to be okay with it. And this guy was a perfect gentleman. He had no objections to me taking away his food. It was wonderful. <laughs> that was fun. I think the bottom line is we're never going to leave you feeling like you're out there on your own. Um, if you have an evaluation, say, of a llama and you've never um, seen a llama, we're going to help you. Um, I've been fortunate enough to, I was a WSU livestock advisor and live on a farm. So I've had a lot of the animals that I've actually evaluated. If staff can't help you, as Maura said, we will find someone, um, an expert in the field who um, they're always willing to answer any questions. And if they're close by, like Maura pointed out, they would definitely help um, by coming by and helping you do the evaluation. That Lori's uh, has evaluated rats. I would love to evaluate a rat. I haven't evaluated a rat yet. They're so cute. They are so cute. They're little hands. <laughs> Irene, that would be wonderful if you would be open to helping us with events. Please reach out um, after this and we can talk. And that's a good point about your dogs too. Uh, it is not a requirement once you become a licensed volunteer leader to maintain a team registration. That would be counter to what we're trying to teach everybody is uh, when they're looking out for their animal's well-being, if the animal needs to retire, it's okay. Your volunteer leader license thing is not uh, in jeopardy. That actually became a very common theme in the New York City community is that all the volunteer leaders were longtime team volunteers, but there was a point where none of them had 
a currently registered animal, and that is because they recognize that their animals need to retire. So that's okay. Yeah, it really is an important part of being, especially an evaluator, but also um, an instructor is, you know, we license you and you are the eyes and ears of the organization on the ground in your community. So when you're evaluating animals, there will be tough times when you have to have a difficult conversation with someone whose animal either isn't ready or is maybe, you know, past their prime for this work. And those are conversations that you will have to have. Um, and, you know, the training goes through that and we are always here to support you through those conversations and through making those decisions. But, you know, part of being a volunteer leader is being able to lead in your community and, and recognize those things and be able to have those conversations when they come up. Yes, we do definitely set um, a lot of information out there about that to help you uh, and support you. Um, we've been fine tuning it. I can say I've been with Pet Partners since 2010 and the number of issues has been drastically reduced. The more the rigorous our, our training becomes um, and uh, like I said, the, most of our volunteers are just so understanding. Uh, we help them through the coursework to be able to see the issues with their animal. They may show up just on the off chance that they might have missed something and, and, and everything is okay. But most of the time, the majority of the time, they're very understanding. I've even had um, handlers call the evaluation themselves mid through, say, you know what, I just don't think this is working or my animal's right today. Things just aren't working out and they call it themselves. Um, and, and that's just lovely. It's just absolutely lovely experience in order for a handler to um, to be able to say, hey, today is not the day for my animals. So um, it, amazingly enough, that is one of the highlights is, is when that happens. So what questions do you all have? You've been hanging in here for a while. Um, can we answer you have some of our best volunteer leaders on this line right now? So if you have any questions that you'd like to ask about what the roles entail or any of the things that we've talked about, please drop them in the comments. One of my favorite things is working with our lovely evaluation assistants. It's almost mm -hmm. never that I go through a, an evaluation and I don't laugh because the, they get into role playing and their acting often makes you chuckle. It's realistic, but it, it still can be funny sometimes. They're fun doing these events, it's fun. Yeah. I I enjoy playing the staggering, gesturing individual quite a bit when I volunteer at events. It is one of my favorite role plays. <laughs> you can tell. Our evaluation is set up to mimic a real visit. So we do ask our volunteers to um, become those parts. Um, Get into character. And if you go to a workshop, they'll also put on an evaluation. Um, you'll either get a video. Um, if you're lucky enough, uh, you'll have an actual team evaluator show up with a team and you'll be able to see the team and talk to the handler and talk to the team evaluator and get more information um, if you know you intend an in-person workshop. Of course. <laughs> We're doing in-person training during COVID. Um, I can take this. Okay. So for the evaluator training to become an evaluator, we have put the training fully online at this point. We are hoping to return to having some in-person trainings in the latter half of 2021. Um, Again, if you are interested in hosting one of those, please get in touch because I will be scheduling them soon. Um, hopefully starting in July or August, depending on how vaccinations go and opening back up. Um, the instructor training is fully online at this point. It always has been, to my knowledge. Um, and yeah, the eight hour course right now, I, there's not been very many of them, understandably so, but I think that as uh, restrictions start to ease and we start to get see more vaccinations happening, we'll return to having in-person courses. But again, for the time being, I'm really encouraging mini workshops. They're much shorter. You can also limit the number of people that you have. So instead of having a workshop that's, you know, a classroom full of people, maybe just have five and spread out the desks. Um, the mini workshops are much shorter. You can also do those virtually. So, you know, set up a Zoom or, um, you know, whatever your preferred platform is, and you can run one of those. We have the resources and the PowerPoints available. Um, 
and that way everybody's safe. But yeah, hopefully we'll be returning a little bit more um, once COVID is more under control and we'll have more in-person events again. The minis are very interactive. So when you're doing them, they're a lot of fun because uh, we rely on the people watching to tell us what's going on. And um, it's, it's just so much fun. You still get to learn the people even though you're not in the same room. Evaluators in Wisconsin. Yes. Yes. Uh, depends where. Yeah. <laughs> I know we have a lot in Madison. Yes. True. Um, and we're working on, 2021 is kind of a, a big year for us. We're working on many ways to more adequately serve our volunteers. So please keep in touch with us. We are keeping track of the people who are making requests that we're not currently able to fulfill. And we're trying to find ways to, to help you out. We're working on it, basically. And the training cohort that evaluator candidates do is um, right now, because it's all virtual, we're doing everybody by time zone. So if you're in Wisconsin, you'll be um, in a cohort with people who aren't necessarily in your region, but they will be in your time zone. Um, that's sort of the best way we've come to schedule them since we put this online last year. And in general, with COVID-19, um, when everything started shutting down last March, we got creative and we started offering a lot of virtual options. We developed our own guidelines, documents that you are welcome to check out on the website, uh, petpartners.org. Um, we tried to find ways that people could still participate and be safe, um, whether that's in person or virtually. So we are still active. Um, we're considerably reduced, as is most places. Um, but it's in the interest of safety for everyone. Also, hi, Sarasota. I'm in West Palm. Um, <laughs> yes, we need evaluators in Florida. Definitely. <laughs> <Please touch. laughs> um, and instructors Please in touch. Florida. <laughs> yeah, Gail. I will happily come to Sarasota and volunteer at your events. So I know we saw one post where someone wanted to be an instructor and we saw mm -hmm. someone who's a current applicant. So who else is interested in being, if you could just type in the comments, evaluator or instructor, who's interested in what role, that would be really helpful. Maybe your state. Yes, we do need people in Mississippi. Yes, we do. Um, should we go over the list again? Yes, go ahead. Um, <laughs> we need a team evaluators. And of course, if we have a team evaluator, we it would be nice to have an instructor as well in Oklahoma, South Dakota, West Virginia, Delaware. And we really hope to grow in um, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, South Florida. Um, who am I missing? Maryland, South Carolina. So if you're in any of those areas, definitely reach out. We can see what we could do um, as far as, you know, looking at your other experience if you're not necessarily a hand or, or currently working with pet partners right now. So it looks like it's evenly split, split between instructors and evaluators and some people yeah. are interested in both. That's awesome. Okay. If you are interested in both, we usually ask you to complete the team evaluator training first because that's kind of the most limiting factor in the program. Um, so we want you to be able to offer testing events to teams before you are offering uh, the workshop. The evaluation will be valuable um, experience for when you do your workshops because you've been in the room, you've done it. And that, uh, I'll tell you, the handlers really, really appreciate that experience and being able to pick your brain. So why don't we one more time go over how to apply? I'm seeing a couple of questions about that. Um, and then we can wrap up. Yeah. So uh, if Alex could show the photo of the volunteer center again, those, those six brown boxes, uh, you're going to create an account at petpartners.org. Then once you're logged in, you'll see this little home page and you're going to click, <laughs> thanks Chris, you're gonna click get involved 
on the left. And there will be a page describing both the volunteer uh, instructor and team evaluator roles. And you can click the button to initiate your application. If you are not currently a Pet Partners uh, member or you have been with us for less than two years, you might not have access to the application link. You're going to have to get in contact uh, with us directly if that's the case. Um, in some cases, we can be flexible with the application requirements and we'll initiate an application for you. But it, that's very case by case. Most of it's based on um, where you live and if there are currently other volunteer leaders around you. Um, otherwise, please keep plugging away at your visits once you're able to uh, and log them. Once we see that you have at least 40 hours in two different facilities, we'll be happy to get back in touch with you about initiating your volunteer leader application. And if you have any questions, please use the contact us link. Um, we all have access to seeing that. That way we can get you to the right person and get you an answer pretty quickly. We could use more evaluators in Atlanta. Um, well, we could always use more evaluators in every town we have an evaluator. Uh, like I said, this is an uh, area of um, volunteerism is growing exponentially. Um, and facilities want teams, you know, everything from hospice to a hospital to a school, even an airport. So, um, and we can't get those teams until they've been trained and evaluated. Yeah, I expect that we're going to have a pretty high demand once things starting, you know, um, to open back up again as well. We're really going to want to get as many people as we can registered and evaluated or evaluated and registered in the wrong order. <laughs> I see Julia dropped the link for the contact us. So um, if you have a question or you go to those brown buttons and you're not able to see that section or you're not currently registered with us, um, use that contact us link and one of the three of us will be in touch with you. And thank you so much, Julia, for helping us with all of these comments. We really appreciate you. Oh, we have someone who divides their time between Florida and Rhode, Rhode Island. Island. Gail, yes, we could. You could work in both places if <laughs> if you pursued something like this and were accepted. Um, we we do have um, some evaluators and instructors who um, you know go from location to location. So that is absolutely um, fine with us. Uh, you may live in Ridgefield, Washington, but you travel every year to Florida. If you want to put on workshops or team evaluations when you're in Florida. We'll welcome it. <laughs> and if you're worried about finding space or finding volunteers, we can also help you with that. So if you're really interested in this, or if you're a current volunteer leader and you're having trouble finding a space, um, we can also help you with trying to find a space. So if you're thinking like, oh, well, I know where I would volunteer in Florida, but not in Rhode Island, we can probably look into that. Thanks, Irene. Have a good night. Yeah, Gail, I think that definitely, you know, if you're interested, reach out if you have been, especially since you've been a um, pet partner in the past or currently, I'm not sure, um, but definitely reach out. I would love to talk to you. And of course, I love talking to rabbit handlers. Um, they're the best. So, I mean, I, I love my dog, but I do like those other species. They make they make a wonderful connection that sometimes a dog just can't make, um, you know, especially like with autism or something. So we love those other species. Hi, Deb. I didn't see you there before. I hope you're staying warm. Uh, Janet, are you talking about uh, FIT? I'm unfortunately I'm I'm a little disconnected from the CUNY scene at the moment. Um, I'm not aware of any ongoing events right now, unfortunately. But keep in touch with me and Jane and. Greer and Audrey and the whole gang. We'll be happy to help you out once once there's something available.
All right, well, I think we're pretty much ready to go. I don't want to take up too much more of your time on this beautiful Friday, but I really appreciate you all joining us and all of your participation and questions. If there's anything more that we can do, please let us know, reach out. We're always happy to talk to anybody who wants to become a volunteer leader. Um, I can say I'm definitely looking forward to assisting anyone who uh, is interested. I mean, even if it's not uh, something that can happen immediately, maybe we like, as Chris has pointed out, there might be other things that we can find to do, helping at a workshop, helping in a team evaluation, helping us find space, um, spreading the word, just spreading the word about what it is that we do. We appreciate all of that. Yeah, it's a good time to do the training now because the demand is a little bit slower thanks to COVID. Um, so it's a good time to get uh, your feet wet with some of the training and get a little bit of experience under you without the pressure and demand that we have normally. But yeah, thank you so much for joining us. I hope that you all have a wonderful weekend. Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah, hope to talk to you again soon. Yes, definitely.